before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Help me share your love and grace in all I do. Lord, I come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Let me share your love and grace in all I do. Oh Lord, transform me. Change my heart.
one. Good night and happy Sabbath. And we want to welcome you to another episode of Youth Life, a program online that seeks to draw youths closer to Christ. Now, I'm very excited about tonight's program. After last week, I've been waiting whole week. Now, I have two stately young men tonight so far very stately and if you look at them you get a, just a sneak peek of what's in store for you so i don't think i have the words to introduce these young men tonight so i'm going to allow them to introduce themselves all right hi good night everybody happy sabbath my name is frankie noel and we have a very interesting program so i hope you tag your friends share the website link and let's all learn something tonight well, hi, good night, I'm Mike Clark, and I hope everybody be blessed by this program. All right, so that's all you want people to know about you, just you, Frankie, and you, Ike. Well, they'll right. learn more as we go along. They'll <laughs> learn more as they go along. Now, tonight's program is interesting, yes, but just before we get into it, we have a number of online viewers, and these online viewers, on Friday nights, they form part of the program. That's now, with all them... We sometimes don't get the hype. Sometimes they, they add to the discussion. Sometimes they ask questions that tend to, you know, steer the conversation or the discussion in ways that we didn't think. And sometimes they share testimonies and they have prayer requests that seek to draw us closer to God. So online viewers, we want to welcome you to tonight's program. Now, just before we start our song service, I want to just bring forth two things that are happening. Now, from... The 9th to the 11th at the Alamander Hotel in St. George's, the Caribbean Union Adra Community Services Disaster Preparedness Summit will be taking place. Okay. All right? And we have persons from all over the Caribbean Union attending that summit. Now, even if you cannot be part of the summit, guess what? On Sabbath the 11th, they will be at the St. George's SDA Church. Okay. And they're encouraging different congregations to send at least two persons to that. So that is the Caribbean Union Adra Community Services Disaster Preparedness Summit. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if you know of anything else that's coming up that you want to tell us about. On June 10th with Monday we're going to have a beach picnic at Bathway so be there from 9am to 6pm so make sure you're there. Alright so that is it and we'll hear a lot more coming up. Now we have a number of persons who joined us even before we went live you know our faces so Amen. we have people like Alana Charles we have John Max we have Stedlin Isaac Jennifer Philip that's from my vantage point your vantage point we see who we have Barbara St. Louis I'm Carmen Brooke Let's see Williams Loam Jason Charles Vicky Cato Miss Gertrude Peters we have Sherman Bihari and Vicky Keto is always there, Rosemary Hope. All right, and then we want to thank them. So just before we start our song service, let us just bow our heads to prayer. We're asking you all there to join with us as we pray. Oh God and Father, we thank you for yet another Sabbath day. You would have blessed us tremendously in ways that we could not even imagine or think throughout the week. We thank you for your traveling mercies. We thank you for the program that you prepared. And we trust that you will guide our thoughts and guide our tongues. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we are ready to sing. Gentlemen, Amen. some nice voices right here. And our first song comes from Sherman Bihari and it's song number 604. 604. We'll sing the first and last stanza. 604. And we're inviting our in-house chorister to join us as we, we sing. 604. As usual, we have Brother Amish with us. Yeah. 
here so the musician doesn't know but at least brother Ike if you have it cued if you can at least read the first verse of that song so we can still hear the message that the person wanted to share 448 mm -hmm. the song says oh when shall I see Jesus oh when shall I see Jesus and reign with him above I shall hear the trump sound in that morning and from the flowing fountain drink everlasting love and shall hear the trumpet song in that morning. I mean, it would have been nice if you could have, you know, listen to the chorus. Oh, shout for glory, for I shall mount above the skies when I hear the trumpet song Amen. in the morning. Amen. All right, so maybe sometime we will have that. So we go to 422. 422. Mm. Again, we'll just do the first verse and the chorus. Oh, 
Philippians 4, Philippians chapter 4, and we're looking at verses 6 to 9. Philippians 4, 6 to 9, and that is going to cue us in for tonight's hot topic. All right, Philippians 4, 6 to 9, and so what I you have one, and we have Proverbs 31, Proverbs 31, and we're looking at just verses 10 to 12. So Philippians 4, those of you online, we're asking you to grab your Bibles, go on your phone, go on your tablets. And when you grab the phone and the Bible, remember to like and share Youth Life for tonight so other persons can join in. So Philippians 4, verses 6 to 9, and Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. So Brother Clark will read for us now. All right, Philippians 4, verses 6 to 9. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, Think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. 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 Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 verse 10. Yeah. To 10 to 12. 10 to 12. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. All right. Mm -hmm. I see Brother X smiling and getting ready. Okay. So we're going and we're going to go to Hazel and Henry's request, song number 99. And the last for the night so far will be from Rosalind Jeffers McCoy, song number 381. So song number 99, the first verse, God will take care of you. And for those of you who might just be wondering or you worrying, I want you to know that God indeed will take care of you. fitting reminder. Again, we remind you to like and share the page and let some persons come on as they sing this song with us. Oh, oh, oh. 
they would have already taken some of the requests, but I've seen persons sitting there from Guyana, St. Lucia. We have persons far north, all the way in Sotes, persons all the way down south in St. George's. We have Beverly Ferguson, Stephanie Hill, Nisa Lair, Trisha Jones-Williams, Akisha Holas, John Max. Wow, a lot of persons are on tonight. Okay, and Desri saying good night from behind the camera. Desri, I want you to know that we are appreciating you being here. John Sandy, Joy Sandy Ford from Barbados, Amen. people, all the way from Barbados. Yep. All right, we have jo Denny Cornell, we have Alberto Harvey. So many persons, Kimo, we've seen you, we've seen you, we've seen you. So, persons, again, welcome. Now, it will be selfish. For you to keep this to yourself. So we say, touch a button, like, and share. And share. And Make sure share. to touch a button, sure like, and share. And if your friend or your neighbor doesn't have internet, tell you what, take your device, record share it. it with them, record <laughs> it. And after, they can even go to YouTube and find the youth live videos. No, gentlemen. Last week, we had a set of beautiful young ladies. Amen. I don't know if you, Amen. I don't know if you, you tuned in last week. We had four ladies here, and these ladies stated clearly what is it that they were looking for in young men. Amen. And while they were talking, you know, some men came on, and the men said, "Well, we need our turn." I find it's only <laughs> fair it's, that it's the men fair. say what they want in women. So tonight. It is the aim that as Christian young men, not that your views will speak for all Christian young men around the world, but the idea is that you'll be able to share. Give us a little insight as to what Christian young men in today's society are looking for in a potential spouse. Right. Now, before I can go on, I need to make sure that you are intending to get married. Of course. Or else you'll be disqualified for tonight's program. Well, of course. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm not going to ask you if you're single and available. This is not youth life. You know, matching session going on here. Amen. Now, we saw a wonderful God. Do Amen. You agree? That's true. That is we saw a God who thought that it just wasn't fair for man to be alone. You know, you would have seen Adam going through the Garden of Eden and Adam watching these animals and he said, listen. I'm going to make Adam a help meet. And when Adam saw that woman, you remember what Adam said? Mm. Adam must have, he, he would. He said, woman, you understand? And even for you now, you find that God might want you to have a suitable help meet. But the problem is, I don't know if you remember stories in the Bible and stories even in the world, maybe even within your community in our churches, you know the effects of persons choosing the wrong meat. So tonight, we want to ensure that the things that you are looking for are things that are good. Because sometimes we have bad desires, and sometimes you have some women who are good in hiding things until. All right? So, viewers online, remember, we are looking to discuss what is it that a Christian young man is looking for in today's society. Mm -hmm. All right? So, again, we want to welcome some persons online remind you that we want you to share what God has been doing for you. Give your praises, give your shout out to people, but remember to like and share. So at this time, when I'm tuning you, when we come back, I'm asking you some questions. You're ready. You're, going to, ready. you're ready. So at this time, we stop as we get an item of special music.
Hello and welcome back to You Live on this blessed Sabbath night, everyone. And we'd like to say to you, remember to like and share so that everyone can partake in this blessing. And tonight we'd like to say hello to Stephanie Hill. Thanks for tuning in. Also, we see John Max. John Max, hello. Bless brother. We see Rachel Lalit. Hello, Rachel. Pleasant Sabbath. And to all the other viewers, hello. All right. So there are some persons who were saying hello before, but so many comments, mm -hmm. it's hard to pick up and scroll through. But everybody who's saying hi and hello and you're relaxing mentally or all is well, whatever is happening, we want you to know that it's a happy Sabbath, but it's an exciting time in the mm. studio tonight. Yeah, we want to make a special shout out to Sister Delena, you know, thanks for tuning in and I hope you and Kimo are enjoying the Sabbath as all well. Alright, Sister Delena, I'm saying thank you for something, you know what that is, but we may be upset that our Spice Island boy would have found what he was looking for mm. in somebody who took him <laughs> quite away. So I don't know if our gentleman here might know that the person might not be here in Grenada or they might just come to pick you up. <laughs> All right. Now, Adam was lucky. You know, God created him and brought Eve to him. So he was set. That's true. Would you be happy if God would just do that for you? Oh, great. Of course. Of course. So then I'm going to ask you, are you prepared to lose a rib? Yeah. Because Adam had to lose a rib, you know. So you're prepared to lose a rib? I'm prepared, yeah. All right, but we know that is not the case. No, they had some persons in the Bible. You know, I went through a list, and there are so many different ways persons got men, sorry, got wives in the Bible. So we want to explore a short quiz, just a short quiz, as we see if our panelists and our online viewers can identify the men who would have found their wives in the different ways, okay? So are we ready? So we know we started with Adam. Adam got his, should I say direct mail? Adam got it directly. So you're ready for our short quiz. And our first question is this. Are we ready? Online viewers, are you ready? Okay. If you can give us the Bible text also, that would be good. So our first question. This judge of Israel commanded his parents to go get her for me. Who was this judge of Israel? Is that Samson? Is that Samson? Yes, Samson is correct. And for those of you who want to follow on, you can find that in Judges chapter 14. All right. Our second question. I hope this one is a bit tricky, Frankie. I want to hear you. <laughs> who acquired a wife by buying property from a Moabite woman? Who acquired a wife? Wow, somebody said Boaz. Samson. So Jamal Levon begs you, you're on target, all right? So Frankie, you're saying Boaz. But I said it, but yes, Boaz. Boaz. You're saying Boaz. <laughs> yes. All right, so who was that wife? Who is the wife that Boaz got? Boaz's wife. Boaz. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we all, right. all right, so <laughs> next, okay, if the teacher in me will say, honey, starting with R. Ruth. <laughs> all right, what is the second question and the men are starting. So the next question, I'm looking for somebody online. All right, so Joyce Sandiford, you correct. Muriel Glean, you correct. Calvin Charles, you shouting. Ruth, 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 you correct. Next question. This man got a daughter from the priest of a median because he drew water for his daughters and also their flock. Moses. Who was this man? <laughs> this <is> audience <laughs> question. Okay, all right. Oh, my. All right. I, I, I mean, you have to calm down, you know. You have yeah, to calm right. down. So he's correct, Moses, and that we can find in Exodus chapter 2. So I can unmute. Frankie, you agree? Yes. He's on mute. The question. Now, this is um, if one of you have to go through that. Or if men have to go through that because of you. Let's see. This man had to cut 200 foreskins off his future father-in-law's enemies to get his daughter for a wife. That's tough. 200 foreskins off of his future father-in-law's enemies in order to get his daughter for a wife. This is the audience question. You like it to be right? <laughs> oh, okay. So he, he, in other words, he has then, to circumcise two hundred. And that means circumcise. Okay. Somebody saying Jacob. All right. No. So I'm going ten, nine, eight. We're looking online. Nobody yet. 
Ken Samuel, Ken you're correct. And if I had a go. price, maybe if you have a song, maybe we can reward you by singing one verse of your favorite song. So Ken Samuel, you got that. Okay, next. How many years in total did Jacob wait to marry his wife, Rachel? On it. Uh, 14 years. <laughs> 14 years. No, um... Do you, could you imagine waiting 14 years for the no. love of your life? That's no. a long time. Okay. Honestly. Wow. I mean, I thinking you, I you have time. and then realize it's the wrong one and have to work again? That's tough. No, that's tough. That, 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 that is tough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 25. And the question is, what is the virtuous woman clothed in? What is the virtuous woman clothed in? Proverbs 31, 25. Yes, Sherry and Joss St. Louis, you did well. Rhonda Wilson, Stephanie Hill, Lou and Peter, some great people online tonight. Okay, so we're going to Proverbs 31, 25. What is a virtuous woman clothed in? What would you want your virtuous woman to be clothed in? And don't tell me a long white dress with a color, you know. <laughs> um... Okay, somebody saying purple and silk, that is Kisha Cyrus. Remember Proverbs 31, verse 25. We're looking for some, should I say, abstract qualities? Yes. yes. So, like um, strength. For strength, yes. Strength is one. Well, she has to be clothed in righteousness. Clothed in righteousness. <laughs> All right, so Proverbs 31, 25 alluded to her having strength. And, and honor, honor. Right, so all right, and that Charles. is Calvin Charles again. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. So purple and silk is there, but we are looking for those abstract qualities. Mm -hmm. And our final question for the night, based on First Corinthians thirteen seven, what does love always do? Mm. What Say the text one more time. Proverbs thirteen seven. First Corinthians, sorry, First Corinthians thirteen seven. You know, that's a love chapter. Mm -hmm. And some people say, if I find, in your case, if I find a woman who can give me what First Corinthians is saying, or maybe if I can find a woman as described in Proverbs 31, I'll be smiling more than I can smiling tonight. <laughs> All right, so First Corinthians 13, 7, what does love always do? What does love, and we're counting on 10, 9, 8, 7, Okay, suffers long. We have one coming from Gertrude Peters. I think that's Sister Peters from St. George's SDA mm -hmm. Church. Joy Sandiford, you're saying, endure it all, all things. things. Mm -hmm. Men, I hope you're listening. <laughs> all right. Okay, anybody else with anything? Anything else you will want, you think that your love will do? Bear it all things. <laughs> Believe, Believe it all, all things. things. Calvin Charles, you're on the go. Mm -hmm. Patricia and Thomas, endure it all things. So that person should always trust, the person will always hope, the person will persevere, and the person will always protect. Isn't that a good thing? Amen. Amen. All right, so this is how we just went through the things that these men got, we went through how they got their wives. So now it's over to you online viewers. These are, this might be the moment we were waiting on. So again, stop, like, and share the page. Let them know that I can Frankie. They are about to spill the beans on what they are looking for in a woman. Are yeah. we ready? ready? Now the studio is um, air conditioned but it's getting hot in here. <laughs> it's getting hot in yeah, here. Bring heat, bring heat. All right. But guess what? Just before you answer, we have some young men who were part of the Campry 2019. And they had a lot to share on what they are looking for. So we stop for a moment while the viewers wait as we listen to what these young pathfinders and master guides have to say. So okay. let's tune in to Street Talk at the moment. So do you plan to get married? Yes, of course I plan to get married. 
Well, most certainly. Yes. Uh, yeah, I do. I plan to get married like around my early 30, well, late 20, early 30s. Yes, sir, of course. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, I do. Yes, sir. Definitely. 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 Uh, yeah. All right, good. My second question to you is, how long you plan to date before getting married? I would say about two, three years. About five years. About five years? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Well, it depends. If I know the person already, it won't be long. If I don't know them, I might take maybe three, four years. Oh. Five to eight years. Well, as long as I get to know the person better than, than how... The normal thing will be, I, I won't just meet up a woman for the first time and just go through a relationship like that. I go like to know the person for a little time, for let the time pro progress by first. And then when I know the person, I could say, well, yes, I could pull the plug. Right, so how long? You have an estimated time? Well, it could be two years, three years as the most. Okay, good. Five years, six. Five or six. Well, about three, four years. Well, I see it um, dating is probably you. See, I, how I see dating is that you date multiple persons. So probably about so when you find out one person and you reach courtship. So I'm talking courtship right now, yeah. so not dating. Mm -hmm. So plan your courts. Well, right now it's yeah. about five years for me, but I don't think there is really a specific time. But for me right now it's about five years. Right. So do you plan to accomplish anything before you get married? Well, as for now, I don't really, I don't really have a shelter of my own, mm -hmm. and they say anytime you want to have animals or ever, you have to have a pen first before you put it before you before you could get it. Mm -hmm. So I want to have my pen first. Yes. So when I have my pen, I could say, well, yes, I could go to marriage. All right. Mm. Wanna complete my job? Uh. Yeah, I want to become an architect. Yeah, before I get married. All right. So you want to become an architect? And you want to um, achieve your career before, right? Yeah. Well, one thing I always think when the Bible says a man must leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, so I always see it as having your own, your own place. And that is one thing I always wanted to accomplish, so that if I, when I get married, I can bring my wife someplace. Right? So that was one of the main things in terms of job, education. Mm -hmm. All this and them can happen mm -hmm. before, during, or even... After. I want to finish school and then after, after I want to go and do some work so I could do and approve my, um, my work in it so when I finish it I could just um, have everything done and then after I finish with everything I Oh, so you plan to go to university? Yes, I am. Retire. And I see retired, finish a contract, I plan to join the army. So, a five year contract and then retire and come back and get married. Well, I would like to be working on an income and hopefully buy a vehicle at that time and maybe build up my house and stuff. Well, you have to get to find out to know who the person really are, you know, background check everything, you know, make sure that they are right for you. Right. So what, as an individual, you, what you want to achieve for yourself before you, you join your life with somebody else? Well, I would make sure that I have everything in place. And what is that? Car, van, house, land, you know, <laughs> everything. So car, house, van, and land, right. Um, most of all, I most of all put God first. And put God first. All right, well, currently I'm pursuing my degree, so that is one of the accomplishments. In addition, I'm looking to be financially stable because in getting married, you have to ensure that you're able to sustain your family comfortably. So I'm aiming to be financially stable, probably start my house if not completed, so that when I get married, I have a place to put the people, children. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so what characteristics are you looking for in that person that, you, that you're thinking about getting married to? Well, honest, working hard, and make sure that they could supply my needs and I could supply the needs. Well, first of all, they must be God-fearing. They must believe that there is a God and live according to that. Also, look for someone who's conscious-minded, who is steady, someone who I can confide in, I can trust, someone who supports my goals and my achievements, and they motivate me to do what I um, aspire to do as well. Um, well, she has to be God-fearing, right? Um, a Saint Adventist Christian. She has to be supportive in the whatever career field I choose and... She has to be trustworthy and faithful. 
Ah, she's smart, God fearing, mm -hmm. funny, amazing, intel smart, intelligent. You hear that? She's real smart and very beautiful. Uh, in a wife, I'd look for someone that is God fearing, has respect for others and herself, and takes care of those around her, a kind person, generous. She has to be able to cook. Yeah, she has to be able to cook. It all matter. Yeah. All right, do you think religion will play a big role in terms of the choice that you would make in for a wife? Yeah, it, it'll play a big role because sometimes others, they might leave the church looking for someone and in looking for someone, they might, you know, be drawn out by that person. They might lose their way of finding Christ again. So I want someone that will help me to build my spiritual life also. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, she has to be God-fearing, um, a great sense of humor, honest, kind, yeah, stuff along that line. Uh, next eight years, so that's 32. All right, at the age of 32, um, what are some of the characteristics or traits um, you look forward to in um, a godly woman or a godly wife? All right, so personality wise, she must be God friend, as you said. She, I like my belly, so she had to be able to cook. She had to be nice hair, so because my hair had so. I can't go with somebody my here because I look into my children's future. Um, she has to have a great sense of humor because I like making funny jokes and she has to be able to understand. Well, honestly, me as a guy, I don't want much. Mm, you understand? Okay. Well, tell us what you want now. Well, all I just want, once I get my food cooked, you know, clothes washed and thing, you know, I go with that and make sure she shows me a lot of love and attention. Okay, good. And finally, what characteristics are you looking for in this in this princess you're talking about you want to get married to? I want her to have good quality. All right, hold on. When you say good quality, what do you mean? She look real nice. She look real nice? She could, she could do what she, she could do things. She could be real smart. She could also do cooking and things. So when, um, so instead, so instead of she had to, instead of I had to cook all the time, she could cook it and do everything for me and then after we could do anything we want every day and every second of the day okay what characteristics are you looking for smart intelligence uh, compassionate spiritual uh, i mean well first basically well, foremost you have to be maybe part of the church well, not maybe but in inside that's all? That's all? Yeah, the rest go falling. The rest go falling. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day. So, guys, it looks like a lot of men are talking about wondering how she looks or if she cooks. <laughs> you know, some spoke about being smart and intelligent, but I, I mean, I have a burning question. You said you intend to get married, right? So sure. people are asking, and I'm asking, you ready to build your pen? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, people are asking, man, I want to know if you're ready to build your pen. I'm not ready to build my pen. As you're yet. not ready to no, build your ready pen? To not as yet. Not as yet. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it is funny. These are younger persons than you, and they're already speaking about what they're looking. Some speak about here, but a number of them brought out the person must be God-fearing, the person mm -hmm. must be smart, the person must be... And the beautiful came over and over and over. Now, Proverbs 31, 30 says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord shall be praised. So now my question to you, not a long thing. I mean, what are you looking for in a woman? What are your preferences? What are you looking for in a woman? What are you looking for? Well, number now, one. Now, before you start, I want you all to know. Some people they might be listening, right? Okay. All right. So go on. Well, I think my brother here, Frank, will agree with me. She have to be attractive, well, to me, because you know, a woman being attracted to you is something subjective. So to me, she she have to be attractive to me. All right. Yes, Just attractive. So well, anybody that attractive to you, you you okay with that? Well, it, you said once she's attractive to, to you. You see, okay, she have to be attractive, right? Mm -hmm. For me, physical attraction comes first, and I have to 
No one send a person here, you have to get to know the person and see if they're spiritual because that's a spiritual woman. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of young ladies out there, you know, they looking good, but inside here, yeah, yeah. Wow, right. not good, but wow. they're they, they, they mm -hmm. far from good. They're far from the map. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so, so Frankie, let's hear you. All right, what are we looking for in a woman? Physically, of course, it's important, you know. You, you can't just throw that to the side. You know, you want to make children in the future. Of course. You have to look at certain <laughs> traits that you want your, your um, offspring to have. Mm -hmm. You know, I prefer somebody short. Um, yeah, I prefer somebody short. That's, it looks as subjective, you know. So what I would find attractive in somebody, you might not find attractive in, in somebody. But uh, personally, um, I know what I'm you, you, you know, that's like an oxymoron, you know. The ladies come and they say they want tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> And you come and you say looking for somebody. Listen, short. you know I, I don't. So it, it, is there a shorty <laughs> out there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. So I like I like natural hair, um, light skin, brown skin, not too dark, not too um fair. You know, it have a range. You know, if you if I find attractive, I find attractive. Well, that's <laughs> All right, caramel. Okay, that's um, right, caramel. Oh, well, don't be Frankie or not for me. Um, the person could be light, they could be dark, they could be caramel, they could be Chinese, white, As long as they're not multicolored, translucent. Once they're attractive, well, you know, once they're attractive and they're spiritual. They All right. Spiritual. So, I'm um, with Jay Charles is saying, Frankie, <laughs> once a person can cook roti, you now people, there are people who are looking on. So, some persons will expose your secrets tonight. So, don't tell me you're like short woman and then a tall woman come and get upset. All right? So, uh, we, we want to say, so somebody's saying, you know, a gentleman here is serious about marriage. I don't know which. Some think it's a wife they want when it's a washing machine. You know, the other people want people. Now, the thing about it is that God made a help meet. You know what help meet means? Mm -hmm. I meet you and I'm helping you. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, we're expecting that a man should be able to, to do. Is that true? Should a man be able to do? Yeah, the man should be able so to. So you should be able to cook and wash of and course, clean and course. everything else. Yeah, of course. All right. Because so when next the wife's sick, you have to. You have to be, be able. able to do you have to not even able about to. that. You know, um, somebody said marriage is a hundred, a hundred, not even fifty, fifty. You know, you have to give. She has to give. It, it has to be a working union. All she right. She can't be doing all the cooking, and I can't be doing all the the cleaning. It has to 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 work together. Okay. All right. So. The some um Karin Gibbs, Karin Gibbs from last week. Karin, you're back online. I guess you wanted to know what the men have to say. Karin says, I help meet, not a, a slave. Amen. And I may Amen. add, a beauty queen? No. A beauty queen? And the woman of the Lord after this. What do you mean by a beauty queen? Well, Frankie, a short beauty queen in your case. <laughs> Who could cook roti? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I if if so happens she's a beauty queen, I will take it. Um, I want you to know that your uncle came online. I warned you. That's okay. And your uncle is Big saying, uncle. Norman Price <laughs> is saying, you look like you want a six foot short person. <laughs> I don't know where he's coming I, from. I, that. I, I don't know about Let's that. Let's look at Kenroy, but Tis and Kenroy, we're happy that you're joining us. Kenroy said we must make it our duty to reflect the qualities we seek in a partner. Beauty is very subjective. It is. Beauty is truly in the eyes of the beholder. That's true. Even when you take off your glasses or your shades. Great show as usual. Kenroy, thank you. Keep moving forward. God's continued guidance. Yeah, God you bless to to you as Kenroy well. is one of our biggest supporters, advisors, and trainers. All right. Okay. So we have that. Next question. Are you okay with if the lady doesn't have a degree? Yes. So it's not a must she has a degree? No. No. no she doesn't have a degree. She doesn't. So you don't mind marrying somebody who dropped out of secondary school? and started doing farming or woodwork or something like that? Well, for me, I don't mind that. Once a person, you know, well, has to be able to contribute some, some funds, you know, right. she has to be at least stable financially. She could do that in agriculture, she could do that in woodwork. That's yeah, fine by me. All right, Frankie? I'm, I'm not going to lie. I would prefer if she's um, educated, at least secondary school level. I don't, okay. I don't mind after that, but I think um, secondary education is good. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, after your CXC job six, you can branch off to many other things. Even if you want to go back to the farm, I think everybody okay. should have a basis of uh, education. Okay, level. a yeah. basis of education. Yeah. Would it be a problem if she works some more money than you? Not a problem at all. No, no, not a problem. The two shall become one. That's the that's two shall become one. <laughs> one, one <laughs> bank account, one pool of resources, and mm -hmm. what's yours is. Do you agree that what's yours will be hers? 
Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, we, we became one flesh. When you get married, you know, we became one flesh. So everything... When we got married, when you get married, when you get married, you're going, you're going, going quickly mm. there. Thank okay. you, Danny. All right. Um, what is it that David Stan Philip is saying? So it is very important to address the current issues facing the church. Both the young men and young women are gravitating towards persons outside the church. Can the young men attempt to identify the cause? All right. So, brother Philip, we are jumping ahead. We will get to that point as to the okay. church's role. In, in this, okay. Now, in terms of the social characteristics, would you prefer somebody who's an introvert? They like to be not that they are antisocial, you know, but they just prefer to be, you know, more or less, you know, internal. They will give views when necessary. They have their group of persons, or do you want an extrovert? Somebody you can go out with. They will. They could be the life of the party. They will speak. They will, you know, or mix. What is it that you're looking for? Well, for me, I like something in between. I like an individual that when they go, they could socialize, you know, they could talk to individuals, but the person, I want a person to know to be reserved, you know, not, not any and anybody could pull you up, not any and any fellow just because he's your friend, they could pull you up and stuff like that. So they have to be sociable, but reserved at the same time, you know, balance of that. Okay, that Frankie? Um, I, I agree with I, but not so completely. Um, I think once a person has self-respect, regardless if they're extrovert or introvert, that wouldn't really be a problem. I'm a very um, outspoken person. I'm a, a very um, interactive person. So I'd like somebody to, to meet that. To compliment. Um, to compliment that as, as okay. well. Okay, all right. Yeah. all right. So what if the person is moody? I mean, you know, it is said that women can be very moody. Are you okay with a moody woman? And I'm not going to ask you from your experience, you know, you know, you would have, not your personal experience, but maybe you would have seen maybe an aunt, or a cousin, a sister, you see the moods that women go through. Mm -hmm. Are you able to, you see a lot of persons say, yes, yes, I love you. But when the woman is going through that time of the month or she has a stress and the mood changes, men tend to feel as if the woman has changed. Are you ready to deal with those emotional changes, the temporary things, mood swings. Well, you see, for me, if it's a general attitude, the person is always moody. For me, I would not go that way. But I'm, I'm ready to deal with, you know, the time of the month type of mood swing and pregnancy type of mood swing, you know, because you should expect these type of things when these seasons come around. But generally, no, I, would, I wouldn't no. go towards an individual. All right, well. Frankie. Um, big up, Chantel. Um, I, I kind of agree with Ike with that. I, I, I can't really take mood swings and stuff like that. The time of the month, that's expected, you know, the hormones and, and all that stuff. But um, generally moody, changing personalities, no, nah, that's not for me. All right. So if the woman is strong-willed, you know, you know, some women out there, I have my beliefs, I have my views, I have my ways. Do you think that person will be able to be submissive? Not a bow down to you, submissive kind of thing, but you know, humble and. Or would you be fearful that that person might want to control you? Um, um strong will and want to be in control is two different things. Um, if the person is strong will, I think they're they're goal oriented. They strive for things. Their standards, they they hold to their standards and on, on what they believe, okay. and I respect that. Very and I, I would like that in a woman. But somebody who's controlling and and want you to this and want you to that and not open to conversations and, and different opinions and your views, then I'd step back from that. Mm. Okay. I will agree with Frankie also. I would like a strong little woman even that who knows what she wants. But then controlling, I will not go towards a controlling woman. But to me, I believe if the woman is strong, will and she understands her duty as a wife in the spiritual sense, you know, she should be submissive to the husband and still be strong, but she will know her duty to me. All right, so I'm looking for some young men to come on and tell us what is it that they're looking, you know, looking in. Since I've seen David, Philip, and Chantel, Caesar, I haven't seen anybody else. So, you have met that short woman or that spiritually attractive woman. All right, Vernon Price, Frankie, you're making your mother proud. <laughs> That's my uncle. That's another <laughs> uncle, okay. Spice Lady, Brave Boy, a lot of men have an issue with women earning more. All right, but as Frankie said, he sees it as a partnership. He sees it as one, and I mean, the woman should not be reminding the man over and over, "I am making all the money." What you say? Neither should the man 
mind you, neither should a man if he's making more money think that he should control. Mm -hmm. All right, Tracy Marish, show good question. J. Charles Strong <laughs> will is different to being plain yeah. out stubborn. And we have some persons, sad to say, even within our churches, we have people, men and women alike, who are stubborn. So it's important for us to get to know the person first. You know the rush thing? It's not um, Axel or, or Fast Cash. It's not something <laughs> like that when it comes to meeting somebody and getting married. So you've met that person. Imagine whatever picture you have. you met that person. The person has everything that you're looking for. But. But. So the first but. She has a child. No, we are forgiven. We know God forgives. Something may have happened. The person had a life. The person has a child. Would that kind of deter you? No, but circumstances and how the situation is being handled at the time. So if I, I now met my short sweetheart and we still having daddy issues with serious daddy issues, that, that hasn't been resolved then I would not want to put myself in that in that situation. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And also, well, I agree with Frankie, and for me, age of the child has a lot to do with it. If it's a young child, you know, and the mother is allowing me to grow up the child in the way the child should go, and you know, she's not, don't correct my child in this way, don't do that for my child, don't do this and that. If she does not allow me to correct the child and bring up the child, then I will have an issue with being with a woman with that child. And also, a woman with... Or let's say a teenage child, a child maybe around 10. I might not go that way. <laughs> I would not go that way. Well, you see, uh, brother, I kind of want to disclose your age, but I mean, for you to meet a lady with a teenage child, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, Jamal begs the saying, some of them stubborn and want everything to go their way, and it's not open to alternative decisions. And we said it's a partnership and everything. Mm -hmm. Next, but the person smokes. And that will only happen if you go to the church to look for a woman, right? No, you you said, would think so. You would think so. You Frankie, think so. Um, mm -hmm. open up my eyes, you know. So you think that we may just have some young women in our church? Not so. because people in the church mean that they're in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, some people just come to, Physically to sit right there. All right, okay. Not take part of All right. The, what if you meet a young lady who's divorced? Would that be a deterrent for you? Depends on the ground of the divorce. Mm -hmm. Depends on the Depends ground. Depends on the ground. Okay, so the divorce checked out to be legit. Let's put it that way. Then no problem. No problem. Would you be worried about what people will say? You know, people always have these things that they will be coming and say, "Boy, you sure about that?" You know, you know she had a, a a gentleman before. Can you handle the this and can you handle that? You know, all of that comes with those things. You know, the marriages between the the two of us. You know, regardless of who you're dating at the time, people always talk. So, you know, let them talk. You know what you have, you know what you want for. If that's what you got, then you should be happy regardless. Uh, okay, of course, right. as a person too, you know, to know whether you could be with that person, whether the person can handle you and you can handle them. All right, so you wouldn't go around and ask questions, like try to do your own, you know, private, investigative kind of I'm thing? I'm a very blunt person. So I ask these questions directly to the person instead of going behind their backs. You know, if um someone comes and, and share information with them, I would go back to that person and ask and, if and this is true. And, and, and or ask. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Chantel again brings up about spirituality, be, spirituality being important, and mm -hmm. drawing our attention back to a scripture reading of Proverbs chapter thirty one. But she dated one of your best friends or relative. Would you still go through? Well, I know, I mean, I, I know ladies, when I was younger, we had this thing that we are not supposed to like, even think about liking somebody that um, one of our friends liked. So you've met this woman, she seems to match what you're looking for, what you've been praying about, but she dated maybe a cousin, a brother. Or one of your best friends, would you be skeptical or would you be okay? What do you say? For me, then I wouldn't be skeptical on that point. So I don't think on that. No. Um, depends. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Boys do have a, a bro code, and um, not because it worked, it didn't work out for you, it means it is going to not work out for me. You know, uh, my friend personality could be is different from my personality, 
But um, if it's a, a close friend and he has a problem with it, then I respect our friendship based on that. If I'm, I'm talking to my friend and tell him, hey, you know, I'm interested in this person, and he gives me the go ahead, then I'll go ahead. So you really have to wait on the go ahead. So if he doesn't agree, you're not going to go ahead? Um, respect to the friendship. Respect to the respect friendship. Respect to the friendship, yes. Oh, wow, that's a whole big. No, Nikki yeah. Hunt, I think you may have another question for Frankie. Your first question, and I know you're going to ask another question after what he just said. She <laughs> said, hey, Frankie, hugs and kisses. Big up, Nikki. I hope she's short. Do you think there's a, such a thing as a woman who jokes too much or doesn't have... Doesn't, doesn't take it. things seriously. Would that deter you from her? She just joking. Everything she giggling, giggling, giggling. Yes, there's a time to be serious, and there's a time to to joke around. And um, there's certain issues that I think you should sit down seriously and talk about, especially if you're considering marrying person. And if everything is a joke, then how do I know you're going to take this serious if you're not taking me serious at the time? All right, then. Okay. Um, Ike, look at John Max. John Max? Uh, shout out to John Max. John you Max know, you is see where You know, you see where mm -hmm. he's headed. So, John Max, we would have seen your statement, but we want to try. We said what Christian men, what Christian men, and the Christian men we look at was spiritually minded men. All right? Um, <laughs> people, um, marriage comes with its unique challenge. Couples should be careful not to bring additional baggage into a relationship. A child, a past relationship, if not handled properly, can put a strain on marriage. I think, Frank, you would have, in your own way, you would have agreed with this statement. And that is why it's very important when you start to get to know somebody that you open and honest. Because sometimes both of you may have to go some counseling session apart from mm -hmm. courtship counseling or marriage counseling just for you to better understand or know how to deal with it. The person may not have a child. The person may not be divorced, but they may have some issues that they yeah. that they're dealing with. Question. Hi Paul. Happy Sabbath. Question. Is it necessary for the woman to be a Christian or will you try to convert her? Is it necessary for her to be a Christian? A Christian. When you meet her, are you looking for a Christian or you don't mind you'll try to convert somebody? Well, for me, I would never go outside the church to get a young lady. Alright, so you want a Seventh-day Adventist, seven Adventist Christian. Alright, say that again. I want a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. Alright. You don't want anybody outside the church. For me, going for someone outside the church is lack of principle. You show that you have no principle, you have lack of regard for the church, you have lack of regard for the Holy Spirit because, you know, the Holy Spirit can't venture with you where you are not sanctioned to go. And also, you, yeah, you, you allow the devil to lead you astray if you go outside of the world for... All right, for so a so Ike, that's what Ike is thinking he will not. Do you share the same or similar views? Um, slightly disagree. Mm -hmm. um, yes, she has to be Christian. Yes, she has to, to believe in God. But I think if I'm strong in my faith and she is serious about finding the truth, then... I'd consider dating that person. You'll consider. All yes. right. So again, we have two slightly different views. I cannot say Frankie's wrong. I cannot say. But when it comes down to the decision of getting married, not just dating somebody, going to get married, no, will you still have the same view, Frankie, that yeah. at that point, if you choose somebody to get married, that person should be a Seventh-day Adventist. A mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventist Christian. Christian mm -hmm. Or Christian yeah. that is a... Seven-day mm -hmm. Adventist. Yeah, Adventist. A shout out to Nova Null who says Christian is the big difference, right? right but for me, um, for, for me, they have to be Seven-day Adventist. Even they're probably Pentecostal or any other mm -hmm. religion. I would not even consider getting married to that person unless they, is they, they have to be in the church. Okay. Sorry. All right. So people, as we said, we have two young men. We have persons online. People have different views. Everything that you need to do, you need to pray. Some yeah. persons may not like, like Desri Butler is saying, Brother Ike, I think that was a bit harsh there. I know several couples in church now who did not start off both being Adventists, they are still happily married. But as we said, mm -hmm. you were dating, but when you came to make that decision, not even courting, right? By the time you get to courting, what should happen there? Yeah. We, are you still going to fully court somebody who's a non-Christian Adventist? Mm -hmm. So we have our views, again, we must pray. And as Sister Peters is saying, conversion is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not 
mm-hmm. not your work. Yeah, but, but again, each of us have our own our I, role to play as a Christian. Agree, you know? but you know, Desri said that she knows persons who started that way, mm-hmm. and they happily married. And we might know persons who started that way, and they're not happily married. No, you I'm know? not saying I'm bringing her in the church for me, right? <laughs> 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 Let's stop there. But um, if she wants to follow Christ, that is her decision. I'm not forcing her to, to become a seven day Adventist. You know, I think a lot of people believe that if you start dating, then you have to get married. That's not true. Um, dating, I think, is you. You have to know if the person is compatible with you and, and all of that okay, stuff. Okay, all right. Uh, but when it comes again for a topic we're looking at in a potential spouse. Oh, right. So things well, were maybe well, after the first few enough. dates you well, may realize yeah. that, that we're good as a friend mm-hmm. but apart from that when we step in forward you know and remember what is Trisha Jones saying? Oh, Trisha, Trisha Jones saying we need to get the young people involved and interactive in programs relating to relationships like before. Too much divorce among young couples especially Adventists. All right, so that is, those were your preferences, personal preferences. Mm -hmm. As they say, the views of these young men do not necessarily, you know, may not mean the views of all Mm -hmm. Christian young men around. Mm -hmm. All right, now the church, somebody asked, I think it was Brother David Stan Philip, he spoke about the church. So, do you think there are potential partners in the church? Well, yes, yeah, I believe there are potential partners in the church. And just to go off a little bit, see, Cherish, Lewis Cherry. is saying, Ike, what if there's no serious <laughs> seminary Adventist girls in the church? Then I guess I'll have to fly out. <laughs> yeah, right. But I mean, you see, when I say the church, people normally mm-hmm. think about, okay, like you from St. George's, that's mm-hmm. St. George's Church. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you could go all the way up to Snell Hall. Mm-hmm. And if you've traveled from Maranatha, way down in the south, up to um, Sotel's, and you've traveled east and west, then maybe when you go study, you might be, I mean, a lot of our pastors would have met their, their wives in USC or, mm-hmm. or some way, I understand. And, mm-hmm. I mean, even, even Cain, with his wicked heart, was able to travel and find a wife. All right, so it's not just always in your geographical location. Mm-hmm. All right, so are there potential partners in the church? Not St. George's Church, don't. I don't want us to cause any controversy online. All right, okay. In the church, our Seventh-day Adventist Church worldwide. Yes. All right, okay. Now, do you think that, do you believe that the church has sufficient programs to aid in the growth and interaction of good potential partners? No. No? No. All right, so what sort of things do you think can be happening in the church to help in the growth and interaction of good potential partners? What sort of things can happen in the churches? Okay, first, um, I think the, the church focuses a lot on married people and not um, people who are dating. And not only that, people who are single as well. Because I, I think um, people who are single rush into relationships without finding themselves. Um, you have to know yourself thoroughly, know what you love, know what you dislike, know what you hate. Um, before... Um, trying to get to know somebody and you don't even know yourself so i think the 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 program needs to the church programs need to help people find themselves first and then have programs where we can um interact with other okay. seven day adventists all right very good i can any suggestions well probably you could have um maybe those social outings individuals you know they get to know each other and so forth um for me i don't really have much ideas on that so. you don't have much ideas mm-hmm. okay no i don't know you might be too young or um, i might be a little too old i remember we had a singles camp yes. at Mount Rose, and i'm sure that. some persons online will remember singles camp so when you went to singles camp um mm-hmm. you, you saw the market quote unquote <laughs> you you knew from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But again, as somebody was making mention to, meeting a Seventh-day Adventist doesn't necessarily mean that everything will be okay. You still have to pray. You have to make sure that the person will align with your beliefs and align with God. All right? It's just not being a Seventh-day Adventist. It's just, it's, it's a name. You have to make sure that the person has it in them. Are we correct? No. Should the church engage in a matchmaking process? You know, like, boy, Frankie, you're there with this girl, you know, five years now, you're making us eat a cake. 
you know them kind of thing i mean i'll give you something or people call you and they say well they they seen you around the place with this girl it's been five years now and all your friends got married look i getting married next week and i just met this girl and you with this guy this girl nine years now you're not afraid and they're pushing you or frankly i find you you know i find i always seen you alone you see you see michelle over there michelle is the so is the daughter of elder so and so and she has a nice job and they start to, to they start to match up and tell you what you have in common do you agree with the church doing things like that matchmaking well for me i could I don't mind one or two individuals giving me suggestions, but when you know, people, when it comes to the point I'm feeling pressured, that's not normal for me. So I find, um, for me, individuals should restrain a little bit from playing matchmakers. All right, online viewers, what do you think? I'm waiting to hear from you. Do you think the church should involve in matchmaking? No, Frankie Nikki Hunt is at it again. Let's <laughs> see what she's saying. She says, what about persons who may be Seventh-day Adventists, but the rest of their family isn't Seventh-day Adventists, and clearly don't hold the views of the church? Would you consider dating someone like that? Of course. Um, her views are Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the fact that she stands alone shows her, her faith is strong. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you're okay as a, I'm getting the impression that you're okay. Now, um, online viewers, do you think that, it, would you be okay with the members in the church helping to set you up with somebody. All right, Luan Peters is saying a lot of young, young men stress heavily on the beauty. What will happen if the young lady met in an accident early on in the relationship and her face or body got disfigured? Then what? Stop stressing so much on the beauty. But I think that beauty is, after a while, it's, it's skin. It's beyond the skin, you know? You might see something that somebody doesn't see. And people may actually want to come and tell, I mean, what are you doing? I'm not seeing what you're seeing. You understand? I mean, it's it, it, it just it's not, it's not yours. All right? Okay, Ken Albertis. Um, that's for you, Frankie. What is the boy code, Frankie? <laughs> I wait with bated breath to hear your response. What's that boy code? The, the bro code. Mm. Um, it depends on your relationship with your friends. You know, if you don't have that relationship with your friends, then your bro code will be different to my bro code. That, that's just it. All right, so Jamal begs, once she's an Adventist, I'm okay. Her family doesn't have to be Adventist, but you just have to make sure again that the family's input does not infiltrate mm -hmm. everything else, all right? The, there's definitely potential partners in the church. Can a couple be unequally yoked in the church? And we, we, yes. we would have spoken regarding, regarding that. All right, now, what is the role on a scale of 1 to 10? Viewers listen, on a scale of 1 to 10, so I'm just be looking for numbers. How important will be the views of your family and friends in that person that you think it's a, a good candidate for marriage? On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being least important and 10 very important. How important will be the views of your family and friends? For me, it would be four. Because I could take advice from friends and families and, and other persons. That's when I'm, you know, investigating to find out about a person and all these type of things. But then I have to get to know the person for who she is. What if the, a certain individual know the person when they was a different person in the past, but they changed up their life? And they could only tell me, you know, the bad things about the person. They could they doing this bad thing, they was in that, they was so poor. But the person could change up their life. And also, well, for me, the reason why I say four is because I have to consult God. If I was praying once a day, I'll pray ten times a day. <laughs> consult the Bible, the Spirit of Prophecy, see God's standard. You know, um, also do some deeper assessing of the young lady. You know, as you stated, First Corinthians chapter 13, you know, yeah. replace the individual's name with that, um, the charity, and put the individual's name and see if they fit that standard, you know. Pray about it. All right. So online viewers, again, reminding you, like and share. It's still not too late. We're asking, how important will be the views of your family and friends? Indra, I'm seeing your statement. You say you strongly believe the church should leave people to decide who they want. Big matchmakers is a no-no. Too many trouble. Spies, lady, brave boy, you say no, no, no. Flag Dre, I think that is only Peter's from St. George's. He's saying 
Yes, healthy matchmaking, not forcing, but guiding through wisdom and experience. Mm -hmm. Well, like you were saying, four, you don't really want people, but mm -hmm. sometimes we can be so blinded in, in, in what we, we said that we wanted, mm -hmm. that persons will know certain things, mm -hmm. and we don't want to listen. Mm -hmm. So I understand the four, but there are people who say, all friends and family out. Samson, this is who I want. Mm -hmm. Just go and get some. This is who I want. Stay out of my business. Well, for me, it'd be a five. Um, the reason, because what you said. Sometimes because you're infatuated with the persons that you tend to overlook certain things. And um, if your friends are genuine friends and they're looking out for you and they, they bring out points for you, same as your family, then I think you should consider their point of view as well but not so much as to you have to make your own decisions regardless but i'll take the the um suggestions into consideration all right okay so i'm seeing junior is saying seven who are we seeing again you see j j date says eight you see lalit lion says seven. nine <laughs> big one nova now says eight says seven delena stolen is saying seven you see charming says Akim ten. says eight all right okay Akim. all right no um, it, I mean, we might be surprised at the 10, but if you associated yourself with a certain yeah. group of friends mm -hmm. and your family may all, if you know them well enough, if they see you, they might be able to say, Frankie boy, you okay? Mm -hmm. okay? You understand? You okay? And so. then if you would have brought that person forward and they understand you well, they might say, listen, Ike has never brought a young woman home before. And the fact that he's taking time to bring this young woman in Maybe there's something good about this young woman. So, so let me listen. All right. But then again, you must know your family and you must know your, you must know your friends. Mm -hmm. All right. A lot of persons are saying the church should not be involved in matchmaking. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, different views, different people. You have mm -hmm. to know what is it that will match your situation. Agree? All right. So we just want to big up some people. Look at some people. We see. Um, Shani Chatterton. All right, I know I'm going to allow Frankie and I to kind of join in in greeting and reading just a few comments that we have out there. Hey, we have Jesse Lewis, we have Asha. Um, you see Trisha, Trisha Williams. Jules Williams, you see G. Okay. Asha had a good Bates. comment. Let's get what Asha is saying. Let's see what Asha is saying. Asha is saying no, 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 oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, marriage actually saying marriage by definition is between three persons, you, your spouse, and God. I welcome the advice of persons who are more experienced than I am. However, mm -hmm. I believe it's important for me to choose with God's guidance, of course, the person I wish to marry. Okay, should we say the person I wish to, or by then the person who God will well, want me to marry? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm asking, I'm not <laughs> saying that you have to agree, I'm just, I'm just asking, okay? So, different persons have different views, you have to know yourself. A young man was on there not too long ago and he said that he prayed to God for his wife and God answered his prayer, remember that episode, okay? Apparently both he and his wife were praying. Mm -hmm. And we want to get down to that spiritual aspect, but we're going to stop at the moment and we're going to have a special item of music. Now, tonight is very special. Three items of special music. You know, music has a way of spicing things up. And also, music has a way of drawing persons closer to God. So, let's stop for a while. And we get back to you online. Remember, like and share the page. We discuss it. What is it that men want?
save life. You are love. You bring light into the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you. All the earth will shout your praise, hearts will cry, bones will sing, great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise, hearts will cry, bones will sing, are you, Lord? It's your breath in my lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in my lungs, so we pour out our praise to all. Great are you, Lord, singing great are you, Lord, singing great are you, Lord, singing great. Are you, Lord, singing grace? Are you, Lord? It's your breath in my lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath. My lungs, so we pour out our praise to only welcome back to the youth life unplugged, where we're speaking about what men want. Now, men, we've been having a very interesting, yes. very interesting, very exciting. Now, at this point. I don't know, but I get a feeling that we have some young men out there who may have some experiences to share that may help to guide both Frankie and Ica, like maybe even some married men. You know what you went through, you know how you found your wife, you happy with your wife and you want to give some advice, not just to our panelists, but also to our online viewers. So, what is your view on using Christian dating sites? Maybe you didn't even know that they had. Yes, viewers, there are Christian dating sites. And may I tell you, we have Adventist Christian dating sites. Okay, two such Adventist Singles Connection and Adventist Match. So I want to know, what is your view on persons going on these websites to find or try to find potential spouses? Well, for me, I like the old-fashioned way. You know, you get to know the person and talk to them, and you know this uh, this type of face-to-face -face interaction. I like that. Um, Christian dating sites. When I got to learn about this all the up in the year, um, I don't see myself using it. And for individuals out there, well, I don't see you no, know, I don't see any problem with using it. 
it's just I just want to say be careful when you're using this because sometimes individuals may not be who they seem or it might be somebody else you know trying to lure you into something so just be careful okay Frankie um I don't have a problem with it um sometimes like, like you said uh, the person is is not in the same country as you was around that website could bring that person with the same characteristics that you're looking for and vice versa online so if it works for you it works for you but like Ike if it doesn't work for you then it doesn't work for okay you. so you wouldn't necessarily promote it yeah go ahead so Should whoever try. wants to do it go ahead and well, do like it, it. alright so let's let's move away from you you have a friend you you have a partner as they like to say alright a nice what do you say a boy your a boy, boy. Yeah, alright yeah. and he says Frankie I met the one mm. Frankie I met the one and you say well I, I, well, how come I, I, I I've never seen her? You 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 you're hiding her away from us. And I say, listen, come by come come by my home tonight. Come over and I go. You will meet her, and you get all excited now because you you've heard him speaking about what he wants in a woman, and you open you you open the door, and he's sitting in front of his computer, and he say, come and meet a man. Come and meet her, and, and you're looking around the house. I mean, you maybe you want to ask. She went in the bathroom. She she stood you up. She's afraid, and he said, "Here she is." You know, I met her on this dating site. You know, mm -hmm. her name is Nadine. Just just give her a name. Maybe I should pull her name from there. <laughs> All right. And he's he, he's showing you, and there Nadine is speaking to you, and he's head over heels, and he he's confident that this is the one. Would you deter him? No, but I tell him still to be careful. You know, um, how long do you know this person for? Um, how often you guys are, are talking? What are you talking about? You know, I, I mean, at the start, emotions, infatuation, all the adrenaline and hormones skyrocket, and you know, your thinking process may not be as logical as you think. So think about all of that. Um, Flag J was saying. Not, not part, part of, of God's, God's plan. plan. I don't think it's a wise approach. I, I don't think so. Um, it worked for many people, um, but I'm saying their experience would not always be your experience as well. Okay, so question. Very similar to the, the matchmaking site. In this case, you didn't know the person before. Mm -hmm. But take, for example, you study. You go to USC to study. Mm -hmm. Or ends you in Jamaica mm -hmm. and you you met a young lady but it just so happened the last semester is when you met that young lady mm -hmm. all right so you back in Grenada the young lady is wherever or maybe in Jamaica and all you're doing is using the phone or the computer the same device as mm -hmm. the connection or the Adventist connection mm -hmm. would you favor such a relationship where most of your interaction takes place via social media? Well, for me, I'm not really a long distance person. For me, that's not the ideal. I have to be able to see the individual, you know, because I don't know what she's doing behind shade, you know, behind the veil. Um, for me, we could keep up a communication, talk to each other, but, you know, we have to do something about the distance, do something about the distance because we can't be too far away from each other, you know, because probably we might see people we like closer at home and we might start to get preference and we might break up. So if we really like each other, <laughs> if we really like each other, you know, we have to do something about the distance. All right, but look, John, that's the same. No, that doesn't work. God brought Eve to Adam, not online. online. Face to face contact work better. So these are poses against the sites. But I'm still talking about we're against maybe, but these relationships, these long distance relationships. Frankie, um, you and your shorty long distance <laughs> relationship. I, I disagree with what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Adam and, and Eve were different times, you know. Um, I could talk to somebody from wherever in the world instantly at that time. I could Skype with them. I could see them face to face like that. Um, if you, the, the scenario with the, the USC. Yeah. If you know what you want and that person as well, and you have trust. Trust is the key Very in that relationship. Yeah, I agree. So within that last semester, three months, and you and that person sit down seriously and talk about, this is what I want, this is what I've been looking for, then it won't be as difficult as you think it is. If that's what you want, then you go for it. 
I, All right. I wouldn't see the problem. Okay. With that. So Victoria St. John is saying it's better to visit churches or have social events that bring young people together instead of dating sites. Not all on the sites who go by the, Advent, by the name Adventist are Christ Center. And that's so true. And Randall Joseph is saying, Ike. Randall. Randall Joseph is saying young people who wish to get married should read a book or two first. Prepare themselves first before they go looking. Always remember to Agreed. put God and his, and his principles first. And I like that point. That's a great point because I stress on the Bible. I look in the Bible to see all God's standard for marriage. And also I read, re, I read letters to young Your lovers. lovers yes. I constantly go through Adventist home and I've started on another book. Um, it's counsels, an EGW book, counsels on sexual behavior. And on, this other stuff helps you know about the do's and don'ts of Christian and so forth. So they have to know these things. Okay. Know the principle. All right. So another question. Age. Age. How important is age? That factor of age. No, I'm not asking about, you know, your preferences. If you want to share, up to you. But do you think that a man should only consider somebody who's younger than he is? For me, I believe that he, a person could be with somebody, a man could be with a younger lady, he could be with an older lady, but you have to really watch the age difference. Because, for, for example, a 40-year-old man, I don't believe a 40-year-old man should get married to a 20-year-old woman. Because what, when, uh, when he gets older and then, you know, he cannot perform such functions and do certain things, the young lady is young, she still has you know, her hormones going strong. And she will be active, she will, might want to do certain things, and she, you never know, she might lose interest in a man. And then, a man, I don't believe, should be with a woman too older than him, than say, when he reaches his 30s, the woman is a granny. Okay. You understand? And she's going down, she's getting really old, and you know, the, the gap, the age difference just looks very funny. But for me, I don't mind going with an individual, probably maybe two, three years younger than me. And I don't mind being with an individual, but most five years older than me. All right. Frankie, what's your view? Remember your view if you don't want yeah. was it? Yeah. Uh, my personal view, um, I don't mind dating somebody older. I don't mind dating somebody younger. The, there's a range, obviously. Um, three, three, four years, that's fine. I'm, I'm thinking about the biological clock. Um, if I want to get married at this specific age, I don't want to have children right away. I want to enjoy my marriage as well. So that's what I'm taking in consideration. Um, age, younger, um, I don't want it to be too young. I want the person to be a little wise, you know, have a little ex experience and stuff like okay. that. Yeah, also, the Bible did say enjoy the wife of your youth. So while you have youth, you want to enjoy all the beauties of marriage. All right, so I agree. So we would have spoken about the church's role, the beauty, the, the whether the person cooks or, or not. We've spoken about what the church can do, the input of friends and family. Now the question is now we saying about the the age range should not be too far age range different age range people have different choices now we've explored and usually and this is not the order we started by looking at some bible texts mm -hmm. all right i remember our opening text was be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication mm -hmm. with thanksgiving let your requests make be made known unto god so on a scale of one to ten I am sure maybe people might exceed that. How important is it for you to seek God when it comes to courtship? Now, we, we are apart from this dating thing, we know already. But I think even for dating, you want God to guide you. All right? You're looking for that spouse. How important on a scale of 1 to 10? How important is your, you know, is it for you to seek God's direction? Ten more see God first and um, from experience sometimes we ask God to show us signs but we're so wrapped up within the person that we miss a sign if you're truly seeking God for help and ask him to show you signs that this person is not the right person or this person is the right person and look out for those signs all right. mm. For Very me, good. it's a big thing you have to see God in all things and for me I don't ask God if this is the one because I don't believe there is 
the one. I ask God if this is a person that, you know, that, that could work for him, you know, for me to be with. You know, if she's spiritually strong, show me, you know, her character, show me who she is, show me how she is behind the scenes. I want to see it all because, you know, God have a way of bringing out everything. Very good. So the truth about it is that if God is not in your relationship, does it really make sense? And I think we can say definitely no. It's not just about the looks. It's not about the abilities of the woman because a woman can be very capable, look very beautiful, but at the same time, she may join you away. So if that person is joining you away from Christ, it makes no sense. Proverbs 18.22 says, He that finds a wife finds a good thing. All right, so gentlemen on the online, our two handsome gentlemen here, I'm telling you that Proverbs 18.22 says, He that finds a wife finds a good thing. All right, so while we wrap it up, for persons who are out there, you have some prayer requests. There's a young lady, a young man that you've been looking at and you want us to help you pray. You, you have been thinking highly about marriage. You've been courting. Maybe there's somebody you would have made the decision. Do you know you can make a decision and still change your mind? Mm -hmm. yes, all right? Do. And you want to know that God is with you in all that you're doing. We're asking you, just, just put your name and we will join in praying with you and for you all right camera batiste we thank you for your commendations and we pray that you also will share all right maybe even on gbn sometime so frankie <laughs> and i you have 10 seconds what are your last words put god first if you want to find somebody and you completely trust in god and you know seek him first and all these other things shall be added on to you mm -hmm. Yeah, pray, pray and see God. And also we have things right before his word, God's word, and you have the spirit of prophecy there, which EGW gave lots of counsels that will be beneficial to the individual who wants to get married. So always put God first, pray. If you're praying once to know who to get married to or when to get married, you have to pray ten times. <laughs> Agree, and it's said marriage is like a triangle. The closer the two of you get to God, the closer you'll get to mm -hmm. each other. So Frankie and I, we thank you for joining us on Youth Life Unplugged. Now next week, the young men will meet the young lady as we wrap up the three-part episode Amen. of What Do Men and Women Want or Looking For in Their Potential Spouse. So we're going to join for prayer. We have Jamal asking for prayer. So person doing CPA, Cape, CSEC. All right, Dayton Philip is there. Everybody. So we're going to pray for all these persons. And we want to pray not just for persons who are looking but somebody mentioned about so many divorces in our church, mm -hmm. and we want to pray for persons who are even married at this time. So for those of you online and for those of you who are here, we're going to bow our heads as we pray. I'm going to ask Brother Clark to pray for us, please. All right. So let us pray, everybody. Most gracious and almighty Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving kindness towards us. We thank you for bringing us here tonight. On this holy Sabbath day of rest, Father, in this youth live session, Father, we bring before you the individuals who are bringing the requests, who are coming to the request that you will help them in all areas that they will need, whether it be uh, education-wise for some exam coming up, for marriage, sickness, health, or also for strength for some person. We pray, Father, that you will grant their request according to your riches in glory, Father. And we pray that you will continue to be with us and uh, the, in the youth life session, that you will continue to empower individuals and strengthen hearts and enlighten people. Be with us, O Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen and happy Sabbath to all. Have a good sitting with the Lord tomorrow. Remember, don't just share this page, but share the love of Christ with others. Amen. Good night. Amen. amen. Good night.
Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me share your love and grace in all I do Lord, I come before you with contrite heart Humbly I surrender all that I am I want to learn from you Please draw me close to you Help me share your love and grace in all I do Shine a light to a darkened world And always live the truth in every way May your love for me Be seen by everyone And lead others to trust and love you more Transform me to